Excellent. All right. Um, we have some fun stuff on the agenda today. It's a little bit of a um, little site visit day, I think, which will be fun to see a few different builds um, and explore. I think um, what I'll do is I will link kind of descriptions and about information with uh, a link to one build each time we hop in the architecture channel. So I just dropped our first tour spot, um, which is none other than the Museum of Crypto Art. And that's why uh, we're thrilled to have Shivani here with us who uh, will, uh, yeah, well, let's, I guess, hop in the link here, uh, which is parcel 304. Um, I'm gonna hop in just now. So you just click it and this is, for those who haven't been to Somnium Space before, this is the web app version. Um, so I think what we'll do is if folks could hop in using that link, um, we can start to walk around and I can talk a little bit about the build itself or wherever we're visiting. Um, and it would be great to hear, uh, and feel free to ask Giovanni questions as well. I don't want to put her on the spot for a whole intro, but if, if you do have a couple uh, things to say about um, the Genesis collection, Giovanni, that would be amazing um, since we have you here. And yeah. folks, if you guys have any questions about uh, the build, feel free to interrupt me. I'll just kind of talk generally about where we are and, and the benefits of these different places that we'll visit and some of the cool architecture we'll see. Uh, Kirk, can I ask you a question? Maybe since we're recording uh, this class and I know a few people are not able to join, would you be able to share your screen of oh, what yes. you're doing so that the people who aren't on it can also have a look? Yes, of course. Let me do a shuffle here real quick. My That's shift, okay. I have computers. One second. Everyone, if you could just hop in that link and I'll get my share screen sorted here. Uh, can we see it in first person view? Like, I mean, in third person, but I can't switch. I'm sorry, say, uh, could you repeat the question? Uh, can we see it first person view? Um, you can, I don't believe in Somnium web, you can scroll in and out actually. So you can see first person. So if you use a, if you have a mouse or a scroll pad, if you scroll in using yes. the middle clicker yep. on a mouse, yep, you yes, should yes, be, yes, yes. yes. Okay. So, thank you. Right. Yeah. And so in Somnium, um, what's cool is you can zoom in and out to get that first person view or zoom really far out and kind of cycle around and take cool selfies and things like that. Uh, but it also allows you to see the, the building a lot better. Let me quickly hop in here. We're gonna test my computer here and see what it's capable of. And I see folks joining, awesome. All right, so I'm gonna share my screen. We'll rock and roll here. All right, can people see? Uh, all right. Yeah. Yep, I see it. See it. Excellent. We are live in Somnium Space, folks. Uh, so yeah, this is the Genesis collection of the Museum of Crypto Art, um, which, as you guys know, you've had already had a discussion from Shivani and Colborn, who uh, are the directors of the Museum of Crypto Art, and we're fortunate enough to have Shivani here with us today. So if you guys have any questions, you can feel free to interrupt me and ask her. Um, but this is the this is a build that I created for them um, not too long ago using the Somnium Builder, um, and I guess I can give a few quick words about the design of the building itself and kind of how we how we came together on this. Um, the building itself is uh, and has these kind of uh, cube frameworks that kind of resonate throughout the build. And then what you see with the fans that kind of extrude out of it um, are 
these extrusions that we wanted to create and frame different moments throughout the museum with. Uh, so as you walk around it, you'll see these kind of, they, they perform different uh, things here. They can be archways, they can be kind of apertures, they can be uh, just a way to draw in a visitor to the front. Um, but generally this was, uh, you know, this was an experimental build looking at how do we represent the kind of early creators of the crypto art movement and how do we celebrate those pieces by giving them their own unique space to kind of speak to each viewer that visits. Um, and the kind of overall framework of the building itself was really inspired by um, a QR code. So you'll see blacks and whites, you'll see different squares and cubes and voids that kind of look at uh, deconstructing the QR code, which is that kind of original language of the crypto scene. Um, and yeah, so I think we can start to walk around. I don't want to, for the folks watching here, I'm just going to start hopping in. Um, so what's neat about Somnium Space is you can teleport using this little green thing here. This will be a little bit of tutorial into the world itself. Um, so you can teleport using this green thing, and that'll allow you to skip over areas if you want. Um, if you're on a trackpad, you can hold down on the trackpad and spin just like this. Um, I, I'm, I'm on the iPad and I don't seem to be able to uh, move around. <laughs> oh, I... no. <laughs> uh, let's see. Which is unfortunate, but at least I got it like open. OK. <laughs> well, at least you're there. At least you're there. Yeah. Uh, you can, we can follow via the, um, the screen recording here as well for those who have technical glitches. I'm sure we'll have a handful. Um, as as we go here um because some of the worlds i think somnium is one of the more accessible ones and crypto voxels is accessible decentraland might have a tough time loading for us so we'll we'll see what happens today um but yeah the so this building one thing that we wanted to play with here was you know freestanding artworks one of the benefits in a virtual space is that you don't need to respect the traditional rules of gravity of structure you can have these kind of surreal environments where the art itself is this massive scale that would never be able to exist in real life. And uh, you can experience, experience it as this kind of small avatar in this giant space. So we really wanted to create a kind of cavernous environment for the art to dominate, the art to speak for itself, and for people to kind of explore and discover these things as they kind of navigate the space. Um, and Shivani, maybe if you have a second, do you want to have uh, share a couple quick words about uh, the mm -hmm. Museum of Crypto Art? Yes. So um, I definitely recognize um, some of the names here, but we have created a collection of artworks that represent the early crypto art, um, you know, creatives. So this is. A lot of the works you see here are the first NFTs created by some of the most well-known artists, but also um, a lot of these works are from people that haven't been recognized yet, but what they represent is this kind of aesthetic that's very unique to, to the NFT kind of early mints. Um, I can just briefly tell you like on the, if, if, I, if you were standing in the front of the museum, the, the right side is um, where some of the uh, works created with AI and ML live. Um, there's like a little section there. Um, the left side, where that kind of um, cubicle is, has a lot of the, you know, crypto-focused works. So you'll see things like Cash Graffiti by Miss Al Simpson or... 2.1 quadrillion satoshis or a crypto punk um and then just like kirk was saying with size and and things that's that's something that we we always speak about as being one of the most interesting parts of bringing nfts into the metaverse is you're not constrained by the physical world so however um you know like magical mind bending you want to get you can um, and, and that's, that's definitely, I think this is the native way to see NFTs is in, uh, in, you know, the web, in VR, 
um, it's so much better than just flipping through marketplaces because you can actually create an exhibition. So, yeah, the, sorry, I kind of rambled on. But what we do is we, we're, we're trying to curate um, this space and, and honor it. Um, and Kirk is so incredible. We, we, for this build, for example, we had a couple ideas that we had talked about. Um, Christine, kind of who we worked with on the creative side of things, she put together a brief for him and he immediately was able to capture what we were interested in showing. So it, that, that was the creative process. Um, thank you so much, Shivani. And yeah, I mean, it's it's easy to work with folks who have such like, yeah, I mean, you guys made this process so simple to kind of celebrate and create something that was just exploratory and, um, you know, an environment to celebrate some of these incredible artists. It's really amazing and um, thrilled to be involved in this project. And and to what you're saying, Shivani, it, creating an environment that is sort of for NFTs, it's so much better and so much more empowering for the art, we believe, than mm -hmm. you know an NFT marketplace or a web page. I think this is these metaverses like Somnium and Decentraland and CryptoVoxels. These these provide a context for the NFT movement that is native and has all of the kind of the same sort of energy and the same sort of dialogue that uh, you can't really get out of a web page that you know queries different properties of an NFT. Mm -hmm. um, this is just a new way to experience it, and this is a way to kind of challenge our notions of what art is. And um, I think too, we're starting to see that. We're, we're gearing or we're starting to get away from the kind of even 2D experience of crypto art. I think there's a lot more opportunity now mm -hmm. to explore new dimensions for what that art experience can be. And it's a lot more than just what we see two dimensionally on a, on a web page. Mm -hmm. um, hey guys, do you want to try and see if we can walk up the staircase? Might make you dizzy. Mm -hmm. Let's give it a shot. Oh, my guy is so slow. Da, da. So uh, this staircase and all of the kind of rotations here, um, all done by hand. I used an Excel spreadsheet to basically map out the different rotations that I needed for each, each step and tread here. Um, this was all done in the Somnium Builder. So um, none of this was imported custom modeling. This was all done using the Builder, which I think is you know, a fun way to show a lot of the things that the builder itself can do. Um, there's a ton of ability within the Somnium Builder that's really exciting. And um, oops, and my mouse is shifting here. You can also teleport up. I'm just being dramatic. Uh, let's see. Almost made it. Da, da, da. I think um, one thing I'm also thinking about the one of the beauties of this world is it's light and shadow. Um, and the quality of the depth you can get with those two working together. So that I think, I think this build really emphasizes that if all of you can see just um, as the daylight's changing. Um, and when you see this in virtual reality as well, it's very, very intense, the play with light and shadow. It's, it's incredible. It's like a Caravaggio, you know, like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the light in Somnium is amazing. I mean, they, yeah. Somnium is one of those, uh, the web version is just a preview too into the full virtual reality app that they have. Um, so if you guys have downloaded it or experimented with it at all, there's a desktop app with a whole VR version of this world where instead of what we see here, where it goes out to the blue sort of beyond, you can see all of your neighbors. You can see all of the different buildings around you and the different parcels and uh, walk between them. And the light is just really, clearly Samium puts a strong emphasis on natural light. And that's part of their aesthetic. That's part of their, the design constraints really that you're creating for. Um, it's a really beautiful environment and um, Artur and the team at Somnium have done just incredible job creating this, this place. And um, this particular build, we wanted to really pay attention to light and these cycles of how you can experience, um, as you walk around, you kind of experience the day cycles, day and night cycles. Um, 
And yeah, I think it's just, uh, these are some of the constraints instead of the typical, you know, you don't have weather to design for as an architect, but you might have light. And that's something where with these kind of cavernous, uh, I'm gonna sneak down here, whoops. Let's see if I can do it. No, I'm keeping it open in this. Um, let's see if we can, so here, here's a fun trick. This is a little side note, but if you look over the edge, uh, and if you're in VR, this is really terrifying, but uh, you can click on different spots and teleport to them. So there's some unlikely sort of jumping points throughout the build that are pretty fun. You can experience different uh, different places and different views of different artwork this way. Um, and so this super structure that encompasses the kind of uh, these ribbons here, this is a fun way to explore the build in different perspectives. Hey, there we go. That's the spot. That's a good spot. Um, so feel free to kind of hop around. And, you know, definitely one of the cool things about uh, builders, every object automatically comes with kind of collider geometry too, which means that you can, you can interact with it with your avatar, which means you can stand on it or walk on it. Um, so that some worlds work that way, some don't. Decentraland doesn't work that way. When you import something custom, you have to make sure there's a collider geometry with it. So I'll mix this with a little bit of, you know, tutorial for architects or builders. Um, I love seeing everyone walking on this, by the way. This is hilarious. There's no wrong way to use virtual architecture, folks. This is a staircase, it's a roof, it's a wall, whatever you'd like it to be. Uh, for those asking how to climb the stairs, oh no. So you can you can teleport up. If you wanna cheat, you can go over. So if you look in the, where I am now, you can kind of cheat a little bit if you want. And I think you can teleport up on an edge like this and then start to sneak up and around and then slowly make your way across the build like this. Or if you want to climb those stairs, let's see what we can do. So you just start walking up and if you have a trackpad, hold down on the trackpad as you walk and you can rotate up build. So you might wanna try the outer edge because on the inside, this, the climb is too steep. This is the stair tutorial of the week, folks. Virtual mm -hmm. stairs. Um, and it's a little hiccupy. Sometimes the treads, I did the treads at, uh, or the risers at like, I think 0. 0.25 or 0. 0.2 um, to capture, to make sure that it aligns with the next level and everything. Um, same thing with these ribbons here. Those were kind of extruded at a length where we could get a connection from the front to the back and make sure that it aligns, for example, with this piece here. So it was a fun way to kind of look at extruding, extruding the geometry out. And um, that plays a little bit with the QR code language too. Um, the idea that the QR code is kind of this extrusion, you know, you're, you're looking at it, but then it's relaying something to you. So this, in this way, you know, these artworks are kind of speaking to one another. They're all coming from the same language. Um, but all right, I think in the interest of time too, I think we, uh, Shivani, I was thinking we could go to the generative art show in Somnium. Um, yeah, that sounds great. Which would be fun. If you're, if you're willing to stick around, you certainly don't have to, but it would be no, awesome. No, I'm here, I'm here. Excellent. All Does right. anyone have any um, questions on, on this one? Uh, can you interact with the paintings here or like see any info about them or anything? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, yes. I, when you, go ahead. Sorry, Kirk, you would know. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Giovanni. I'll just click as you, as you describe here. Um, yeah. When you click on the piece, um, it, it'll, it'll say like the title and then I think it says open in browser and then it opens up the artwork on OpenSea. Okay. Um, where you can see everything. And same thing happens in VR. 
Yes. Um, and in VR, I think you guys can see the full tab here, but you can see there's a little mouse button. There's a VR goggle button. Um, there's a full screen. There's a few different things over here where you can kind of adjust settings, uh, turn your microphone on, whoops, or click over some stuff here. Let's see. Um, these are the uh, emotes over here. So you can click you know, wave and wave. F. <laughs> you can dance. So there's lots of fun stuff you can do here. And when you have a big party in Somnium, it's pretty fun to have a big dance dance off. Uh, so let's see. I'm going to send the link for the next one in the architecture channel. And this is another build. Uh, this is another Museum of Crypt Art build. And let's hop into that one. I'm going to go quickly into that. Let's see. Kirk, can I ask you a quick question about the desktop versus the browser? Of course. So if I open the desktop version, it then seems to go back to the browser. Is that, is that correct? Or should it not go back to the browser? Uh, the desktop version of, uh, of Somnium Space? Yeah. Correct, yeah. Ah, so uh, when you have the desktop app, uh, there's a few different options of how you can explore Somnium Space. There's a button for VR. There's a button for 2D. And I, I don't remember if you can actually, if it, for me, what it does when you click 2D is takes you into the full VR environment, but it only gives you a 2D flat perspective for your computer. Um, I don't remember being able to hop into the web via the desktop app, actually. Is that using the, um, are you using the downloaded uh, PC client? Yeah, it has 2D VR, and then it says PC client underneath that. So maybe I just PC. I don't know. Maybe it's also slow. It's been a long time since I've used uh, Somnium Space. Usually, PC it's, client is like the patching, right? And I haven't yeah, clicked. Exactly. I just clicked it, and it says downloading patch. Yeah, I think that's like the client that helps you get into the VR world. Gotcha. Then yeah. 2D, I yeah. guess. All right. So you no can worries. use 2D. No, no, it's it's super confusing, honestly. There's lots of different yeah, yeah. options for this. Um, and the the 2D version will take you into the kind of full VR world where you know you can visit the neighboring builds, you can experience weather and and explore around the full Somnium space. Um, and if you click VR, you'll need to have a VR headset hooked up for that to work. Um, but the web version is cool because it, it just holds individual buildings and gives you a unique link for each individual building. Um, so it's a fun way to kind of like have little pop-up meetings, have uh, online galleries, and it's pretty effective. The sound quality is good. People can hop in and out pretty effectively. I'm gonna quickly switch. Thanks. All right, let's switch here. I'm gonna share a different screen. I'm gonna log in quickly. All right, so we are now in, welcome. We are now in, um, Another Museum of Crypto Art build. Um, this is actually from an event yesterday. So, and the one that uh, Nicole was was hosting as well. So, we a few of us have been here. You guys might have seen this yesterday. Um, but this is a celebration of Processing.org's twentieth anniversary, um, and a showcase on generative artwork, and kind of the open source movement that generative art um, has. Uh, has embraced here and some incredible examples from amazing artists wrap around this sort of spiral staircase um, that uh, was actually a building I originally created for the incubator of crypto art last fall. Um, and so I'm really thrilled that this uh, 
to be a host for this incredible series of artworks. And it was really humbling to see uh, all these amazing artists, you know, walking around the spiral staircase, climbing it yesterday. Um, but Shivani, do you have any anything you want to say about that? Uh, or Nicole too, you guys were both, uh, had a busy day yesterday yeah. us walking around the staircase. Um, yeah, I think I can just tell you a bit about the artworks. They're all made with processing and P5, um, or, or I guess not all of them with P5, but processing and the founder of processing is Casey Rees, uh, one, one half of uh, the founding team. So he was here, um, which was incredible. And then a couple um, generative artists were also here. In the works that you see wrapping around the staircase are from 12 different generative artists. A couple of them are from art blocks. Um, and I think there really represents like how what one person started as like an as a innovative project really became an entirely life-changing technology for thousands, thousands of people aside from him. So that was just a really incredible story. And we were very, very happy um, with Nicole to like discuss that. And she like had this idea around um, also working with Casey to like build this exhibit. So it really came together beautifully yesterday. Um, and you can actually like see in the chat, I think here, like everything we were talking about. Um, but yeah, huge fan of generative art with the museum. And we really hope to keep highlighting creative coding more. It was a really beautiful showcase yesterday. And Nicole, I just really loved the conversation that we had with everyone. It was just inspiring to hear from the artists. And I think, you know, it's also a great testament to using Somnium space for an event like that. The audio was, yeah. it was fun to hear everyone. It was fun to walk around and see, um, see people exploring and kind of, you know, bump shoulders with, with different artists who um, were hopping in to see their own, own art exhibited, but also talk to it right there in the moment. Um, the build itself has uh, these spirals that kind of, uh, frame and capture different levels of the artwork itself so instead of having kind of typical rooms where you have walls this is more about kind of a circulation in the center a spiral that allows you to go up the levels but each time you go up you see a different artwork if you go around the other side of the staircase you'll see a different level that you can't access uh, from the level you're on currently on this side of the spiral so to speak um, so if you make your way up, it lets everyone, if you can, either by teleporting or by walking, let's see if we can make our way to the top. And then we can have a dance party. <laughs> we made it. So here we are at the top. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think, you know, Somnium, has some this also this build was done uh, manually using the builder it took a ton of rotating um ton of kind of adjusting and editing the different rotations of each each panel here each stair and um but somnium gives you some incredible there's someone dancing on the artwork over there amazing that's amazing how does it how how do do it? Do it? It's balanced <laughs> There it is. <laughs> um, so some other logistic things too. You can change the this. Oh, someone might be. I think you might be unmuted. If you want to mute. Oh, there we go. Um, but awesome to see everyone up here. Uh, there's some fun, I was just gonna say, there's some fun little adjustments you could do to the world. You can put it on just daylight. You can put it on night, night mode. You can put it on kind of cycles. So this will show the kind of sunrise and sunset. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I think, 
uh, you know, this is just a beautiful showcase of some incredible art. And I think what this, this metaverse movement is doing is really giving people uh, an ability to connect in a very quick, impromptu kind of way, honestly, than, you know, setting up a show like this would take years for some institutional sort of, for some real institutions that are in real life, so to speak. Um, doing something like this virtually using um, a build that you can create quickly and populate it and then invite people using the link. It's a really incredible way to get people to come together from around the globe. And I think we're seeing, especially this past year, the benefits of this. It's just really incredible um, to have access to basically, you know, a body of people who want to meet and talk about issues like and topics like generative art and you can gather people together and it's a really it's just pretty inspiring so i think mm -hmm. we're just beginning to see the impact of what this technology can do because it's really a place basic place making tech where it gives you a place to gather and to collide with people who have similar interests and so it's it's incredibly exciting to see this kind of thing and to see a show like this happen yesterday um it's very very cool so i'm going to jump off here and then you can slowly glide down in a nice perspective of the building. There we go. And I'll land safely on the bottom. Ta -da. Um, um, I'm just gonna add, like, I think with the with the Genesis Collection build, like for example, we had this opening event, and then there was like a a live DJ who was like streaming music afterwards. And there was probably like maybe 60 people who attended throughout the evening. So the, the world was able to host a lot of us. And I think, like Kirk was saying, that's really incredible. Um, yeah. That was a surreal experience having, uh, there was a DJ and someone, it was someone playing guitar um, and everyone mm -hmm. gathered around and danced. And it was such a surreal kind of environment to have you know, music as you might have in an opening of an exhibition or a gallery. And um, you can do the same thing. There, there's some fun equivalents and even better benefits to doing it virtually in some ways, because you can be more inclusive, have more people attend. It's obviously free and uh, having kind of free access to something like this to hear from artists who are pioneering artists. I think that's just in the spirit of the open source movement that blockchain and processing and generative art is all a part of. And um, so it's really exciting to see. And I think we're just at the beginning of seeing what what this creates for for artists, for for architects, for curators, for artists themselves. There's just um, so much here. And yeah, so this is um, if anyone has any questions about this build, um, Otherwise, we can hop to the next world here. We'll dive into crypto voxels. But before we go, you guys have Shivani here. Um, and if there are any questions you'd have for either of us, feel free to interrupt. I think the build looks great. I, I love how you guys had the concept of um, suspending the artwork based on the spiral staircase. It's a pretty novel solution to typical gallery. I appreciate that. I, I really appreciate that. That was, um, you know, we were thinking about ways of framing the art and giving it kind of an intimate experience, but making the whole thing extremely public and open. Um, so I think it has that effect as you as you walk up it, but when you zoom out, it's just this massive open sort of helix uh, that wraps around and everything feels very transparent, but you can still have that intimacy with the art as you enter it and walk up it. Um, and I love watching the light on this uh, as it goes around. Somnium just has beautiful, beautiful light. Um, one thing too, before, let's see, it might be more visible here. So one cool thing that Somnium has a bunch of updates coming up uh, with their web browser. If you look around, there are these little stars and you can select them. And these are actually neighboring plots in the virtual world environment. So you can actually teleport to different buildings that are represented through stars that surround the build. Um, so that's a pretty cool feature, a nice way to discover different different buildings. But 
something I actually didn't. I thought the stars were purely aesthetic until not too long ago. Um, that's fun. All so right. one quick question is the web browser then, so I'm in the, in the actual uh, desktop app, I guess you can call it. And it's very different in the sense that like, I don't, I feel like as you're just in that space and you can't really teleport to different um, positions. Is that true? That that's true. So when you're in the virtual reality world, you're very constricted to walking distances, basically. Um, you can't hop between different buildings. You can't kind of put in an address and hop to it. Um, I think the last time Shivani and I were in, we had to, we had about a five minute or 10 minute walk that was yeah. basically under, <laughs> under the ocean to get to a building that we were reviewing. And uh, so it's, it's kind of interesting. The web is a lot fast, a lot more fast and kind of, um, uh, but the, the VR version itself, it's really restricted to walking distance. Gotcha. So the web version is probably new within the couple last three months, I'm guessing. It is fairly new compared to the, um, the it started with the VR only version. And I think they realized that you kind of need a bit of both worlds and ability for people to quickly access their buildings and share them. Um, obviously having a VR only environment is a little bit restrictive for folks who don't have access to a PC, uh, an Oculus. And I think what the web version does is give kind of an alternative for folks to visit and experience um, but, and gives them maybe a hook to dive deeper into the VR side of things. And I, I got to say, like hopping into this space in VR was mind blowing. I think after after I first did it, I said, like, you know, this is, this is game over. <laughs> like, this is so mm -hmm. interesting. It's it's so uh, disruptive for how we can experience things collectively. So um, strongly recommend if anyone has an opportunity to experience these spaces in VR. Somnium Space is an incredible pioneer of this tech. Yeah, it's just, it's, it is really, it is totally game changing. It is just a very high barrier to entry because you need, um, I mean, like an Oculus is not that expensive, but then you need a gaming PC and you need a Rift cable as well. Um, so I think there's just like some equipment that's needed to get into VR currently. Um, once there's like a standalone application or once VR develops more, I think that'll be the first place that people will want to go to see digital artwork. It's just so much better. So, yeah. yeah I think the VR was incredible. I mean, it's been probably three months since I used it, but uh, it definitely, the yeah. experience is next level. But that's the question I had for you guys. So to visit your gallery in VR, I literally have to physically walk there in the desktop app then. I can't just type in the coordinates. Um, so for the like the first build we just saw, the Genesis collection one, you can teleport there from the city center. Got it, because it's like a popular in... destination I saw. Yes, um, but this one, you would have to walk, correct? Got it. Yeah. This one, the first time uh, that I came to this build after after pushing an update to it, I went in the wrong direction for 20 minutes. <laughs> it, it, uh, I got a little disoriented and uh, I literally, it took me maybe an hour to find where this was. Uh, it was pretty fun, but along the way, I, I also came across somebody. This was my first time in Somnium, maybe uh, almost a year ago. And I didn't yet know how to interact with the world. I didn't have a headset set up for it. So somebody came up to me, started waving, started asking me questions, and I couldn't do anything, um, which was super awkward. And uh, but yeah, I Same think they happened to me. First oh. time. <laughs> I think there needs to be like a you know a newcomer gesture that you can do, like you know wave at somebody, <laughs> but not you know who knows. Um, but yeah, I think it's an interesting dynamic, and that's something where. Uh, I love that there's a teleport that can take you to the Genesis collection. Um, this one is definitely a hike. If you're at city center, it takes maybe about 10 minutes to walk. Um, but that's cool. That's that's a way that you can basically, I've seen a lot of these meetups. It's like meet at this place and then we'll walk over. And I think that's 
that's a nice kind of more, it feels more real. It feels more of like an excursion that you're taking with a community of people. Um, and yeah, I, I really am blown away by what Somnium Space is creating. And, you know, these projects, all of these metaverses, comparatively to gaming companies, these are small teams. And um, they're doing an incredible amount given, uh, given their current footprint. And I think that's a testament to the energy that the blockchain world is giving this this technology. And I think um, also, I think blockchain users have more of kind of like a endurance for, for some glitches or for some hiccups because we're so excited about what the technology is, is offering. And um, that's accessibility and that's uh, kind of different kinds of open source creativity. Um, Sorry, I could rant on that all day, but I think it's time for our next build here. Um, I'm gonna share a link in the chat. Uh, Shivani, you're welcome to keep, continue to join us. This next one is gonna be in crypto voxels. Yeah. I have a question um, about Somnium. Yes, uh, of course. Can anybody build a aid service? Build it. I'm so sorry. Could you repeat the question? I think it cut out a few times. Can everybody build in the Somnium spaces or is it a paid service? Like, what can, what should I do to build a building space in Dar? I think, I think the question was asking how you can view buildings that you're working on in Somnium. No, no. How, how can I? How you can build? Can I build? Can I build? Yeah. How how can you build? Gotcha. Um, so yes, I shared uh, last week. There was a, a few different tutorials about building insomnium space. I think if you go to that, there's a great wiki. I can. Um, it's in the architecture channel. If you scroll up, uh, I'll share it again as well um, if folks need it. But there's a. Um, there's a wiki that'll give you a kind of series of different tutorials that will help you build Insomnium. The link for the builder itself is just on the somniumspace.com website. It has a free to download builder. You can start building on it, but it's PC only, unfortunately. You can only build using a PC. Um, but it has, um, so that might restrict things, but I think they're coming out with new tools all of the time, all the time. And, um, uh, Somnium definitely has a really wonderful builder if you're able to access it by a PC. But I'll share some tutorials as well, but there, there are a handful that are in the wiki there that would help folks for the first time figuring out how to download the app and, and build with it. Oh, I have a question. Can you, like, I'm looking at your stairs, like the, you built in for the gallery. Can you make things with procedurally? Like, can you place objects with code, like writing code? Uh, so you can't using the, this was just done manually because um, I, uh, I'm i a little bit of a masochist, but uh, you can do stuff procedurally in code and import custom objects. So what Somnium Space does allow you to do is in full VR, you can upload custom objects that are done procedurally. Um, this this is an example of something that was made to look procedural, but is still done manually. Um, but there, uh, you can create an object, for example, in Blender or Unity, and then upload that custom object via an FBX file. And with an FBX file, you can create just about anything in 3D and then upload it to Somnium Space. Um, they just came out with their custom SDK, which allows you to create custom 3D objects, uh, like procedurally generated objects. Um, so it's possible, um, and but there's a lot you can do with just the builder without without code. Um, but this is uh, this is definitely you know Somnium gives you a lot of flexibility and a lot of things to build with here. Thank you, Kirk. Of course, of course. Great questions, guys. Um, is there anything else before we hop to crypto voxels? Oh, I see uh, Nagar is asking, is there a possibility to move your space in this world? Let's see. Well, I'm catching up with the conversation here. 
Um, so yes, you can you can technically download. They actually just released this a, a couple days ago. I don't even know if it's announced yet, but you can download your building and then uh, upload it to another plot. It takes a little bit of work because you need the SDK to do it. So you have to then re-import your object that you've downloaded, put it back into the SDK via using Unity 3D, and then upload it to your plot. Um, so it's a little bit of a back and forth. I wish there was an easier sort of drag and drop option, um, but I'm I'm sure they're coming out with better better tools for this all the time. Um, with that, let's hop. I'm going to open the link to the next world. We can keep asking questions about Somnium Space as well. This next um, this next building is called the Underground Sistine Chapel. And it's actually uh, sort of unintentionally here, but there's there's another museum of crypto art in crypto voxels, not to confuse everyone. <laughs> I should have picked a different one for the next here. Um, but this is a really beautiful building. Um, and uh, let's hop in and see what this looks like here. I'm gonna switch. So crypto voxels is a really, really cool very different sort of environment it has its own kind of flavor, like we talked about last week, the different flavors of the metaverses. Let's see. I'm going to share screen again, and we're going to click on the crypto voxels. Here we are. Welcome to the underground Sistine Chapel. All right, so this is a project by uh, Pascal Boyart and uh, the 3D scene here was was created by 234D, who does some incredible um, crypto voxels buildings um, and other kind of 3D work as well. And this is just a, a favorite build of mine. It's really stunning. It's a wonderful use of um, of crypto voxels and kind of mapping textures onto a pixelated environment like this or a voxel environment. But if you walk into the main space, like this is just, just stunning. It's just really a beautiful project. Um, and uh, 234D is uh, a digital artist who lives in Paris. And uh, Pascal Boyart is also an artist who's based in Paris and he did this in real life in a warehouse. And what they did was document it thoroughly using a series of cameras and then remap it into a digital version of what of the real world version. Um, so this is a really interesting example of kind of a mirrored project that takes a, a real world example and maps it onto a digital example so you can have kind of a, a, a virtual counterpart. Um, and I just think this is a, a really interesting and well, well done uh, building that is I mean, we're looking around now at a bunch of kind of very low res <laughs> avatars in a very high res space. It's just really beautiful what this project has been able to do on a um, crypto voxels plot. And I'm sorry, I should probably walk around a bit here so we can see, get a good look of everything. Um, but the quality is, is pretty impressive. You can see the seams of where the artwork was mapped on the side here. Uh, and I'm just showing you this so you know the kind of like extent to which that they've created this 234D and has, has worked on this building. Um, you can see on the floor as well, there's some seams of kind of looking at how the textures are split. Um, and it's just really well mapped. The first time I was here, I couldn't believe that this was a crypto voxels build because the lighting is so good and it's just able to recreate what was there in the space. Um, but I think there's some music playing as well here, but there's some great descriptions about um, about what this underground Sistine Chapel is about and the work of Pascal Boyart, who is, if for those who are unfamiliar, he's done a series of really beautiful murals and very early on in the crypto space that dealt with kind of tokenizing individual aspects of the mural. And I believe for this mural, you can collect the different faces of uh, of this main mural here. So all of these are NFTs, are the individual faces of what you can see. 
and obviously it's a kind of you know modern recreation of uh of lots of i see uh you know credit cards falling out of a musical instrument people holding macbooks um really beautiful piece and on top of that a wonderful space to celebrate the piece but i thought this was a really good example of what um in crypto voxels you can create beyond the kind of voxel aesthetic this is a very real world recreation i just like to add that i've spent a lot of time in crypto voxels and never seen something to this level i think the lighting like you said is absolutely incredible and just it's yeah. can i go ahead go ahead no that's it I was just going to echo what you were saying. Yeah, this is really amazing. I've never seen something like this in crypto voxels. No. But I'm guessing the lighting is just coming from the way that the HDRs or the images were taken originally. So they kind of are pre-lit and then you just have the lighting. It's natural, right? Yeah, so you, you see here there are these little squares. I think these are the lights that are emitting onto the walls here but it's mapped to be consistent with the, with the light sources in the real space. So I think what they've done is a very sneaky, good job of, of matching, as you said, matching where the light is coming from in real life, but recreating those light sources with little emission objects. So I think these are one, two, three, four emission objects here. Oh, and maybe along the side as well, actually. Uh, I can't tell. I love going into these builds and trying to figure out how did how did the, how did someone make this? <laughs> what did they do for this? Um, impressive. Yeah, I likewise. I I messaged two three four D after seeing this and was like, oh my god, this is ridiculous. So I guess now we have to build the cool architecture in the metaverse first, and then we can go build it in the real life. Get the lighting files, projection map it, take photos, and then re-import it into the metaverse. <laughs> <laughs> It is. It's a. That is. If that's not meta, I don't know what it is. That's. That's it. Um. But yeah, this is definitely. It's pretty surreal, and um, it, it's interesting to see what people do with an opportunity virtually. Do you? I think there's a big question, and this goes back to our discussion last week of utopia dystopia. Do we want to create something if we have the opportunity to? Do we want to create something that replicates the real world or create something that's completely different? Um, after this, uh, after this tour, I'll send another link by 234D who created a very surreal, uh, other building. That's one of my absolute favorites, but, uh, didn't want to overwhelm with, with 234D builds here, but this is, this is a really, I mean, I'm glad you guys like this. This is a stunning place. Really well done. Um, and in not a very big building. I mean, it's really just, it's, it's a room, just like the Sistine Chapel, just like the, the, uh, uh, the warehouse where this was created. It's very intimate and um, really immersive. I mean, look at the, oh, just the textures on the wall here, just fantastic. Over here, I think, yeah, these are some of my favorites. Just beautiful. Um, and there's lots of little Easter eggs here. You can get some information about uh, about P-Boy, Pascal Boyart, and studio, his work, his past works, um, and also the different supporters of this project. You can, might recognize some names up here. Um, there's Whale Shark and some folks at Conlon Rios. Um, and yeah, just thought this was a really beautiful example. Um, I'm going to share the next one here. The next building. Let's teleport away to, uh, let's see. All right, next up is The Candy Shop by Brian Brinkman. I'm going to close out and then hop into that. And this one, uh, this is a build that is incredibly creative, really also immersive, but very different stylistically than the previous build. So what I'm gonna do is share my screen again here. All right, 
it might take a minute to load. There's a lot happening here. There it goes. You can see it load before our eyes, all the different details. This build is called the Frankfurt Candy Shop by Brian Brinkman, who you guys might know. He's a, he's a renowned figure in the crypto art space and really brilliant creative mind. Um, this building was part of a series last summer involved in Pranksy Land. You guys might know Pranksy as well, who's a, a big name in the NFT space. Um, this was part of a series of buildings that were created as part of a giant tour uh, of different buildings in, in crypto voxels. And I believe the buildings themselves were auctioned off last, I think it was this was last summer. Um, and uh, this was one that, you know, was my first introduction to Brian Brinkman and his work. It's just incredibly playful, very creative and extremely immersive. Um, if you go inside, there's just so many different uh, elements here and links and different artifacts that you can explore that are these beautiful voxel models. And at the time, these were a lot of these, I believe, were wearables and different things that you could purchase as NFTs. And um, I just think this candy shop is really, really immersive and interesting and kind of a fun example of what you can do with the storefront in a virtual environment. Um, you'll see some of Brian's signature ropes and strings here hanging in, in one of the rooms where you can see a few different artifacts hanging, but just super fun and immersive. And this was one of my favorite builds that I've seen in crypto voxels. I believe there's a guest book at the time that you can sign has been taken away. I don't know if anyone can hear the music, but there's music. <laughs> that might just be me. series there are a handful of neighboring builds around here that are really cool uh this one across the street actually since we're here this one is by shortcut um uh, a friend of mine who i met a long time ago actually in the early days and he is this incredible interactive build where you can click and then teleport into different spaces um and from here you can click this was actually not on the list here, but I forgot this was across the street. It shows a really cool way of teleporting. Um, and maybe I'm stuck actually, let's see. Oh, there we go. So I think you can walk out, no? Maybe we're trapped. Ah, if you click the white, you can escape but it takes you into these different rooms and it's a really cool way of exploring um, using the teleport option in crypto voxels. Um, but again, this is a great example of, you know, this is a, a voxel oriented world, but this doesn't feel uh, constrained by those things. This is extraordinarily creative and a really beautiful, beautiful scene. Um, all right. On the interest of time, I think maybe let's try to hop to the next one here. And you have these, uh, everyone has these links in the chat, so you can always hop back to the same one. Very pleasant, pleasant artwork, or artwork and music here. All right. So off we go to the next one. And this one, we are now hopping to Decentraland. This is a build by Polygonal Mind. Uh, it was an architecture group. Um, let's see here. And Xcopy. So this is Xcopy's build. It was created by Polygonal Mind, who if you guys don't follow on Twitter, just creates some 
really beautiful, incredible meta architecture projects. Um, so with Decentraland, it might take a couple minutes for us all to hop in. And we also might not all be in the same world. And that's okay. What Decentraland does uh, before people click that link or as people click that link and it loads, you'll see different realms added to the URL extension of Decentraland. I'm now hopping into a realm called Odin Red, and that's identified at the end of the URL here. And what I'm gonna do is share my screen so that folks can see this as it loads, or I might, might be too quick. Let's... All right, so if you can see this, oh, you can't see the URL part, but um, the URL itself says Odin Red. So you guys might have a different realm and that's okay. I think the point is that we just hop in and start walking around. You might see a handful of folks, but not everyone. Um, and the reason Decentraland does that is to kind of help with the servers and the loading. Um, my computer might not be able to handle this, but let's try. There's NFT Collective, hey there. Um, hey there, cool sweater. <laughs> Am I wearing my sweater? I haven't changed my outfit in a little while here. Uh, so in, in this environment, which I haven't been in a little bit, there's uh, you can click the bottom hamburger menu here and get some of the controls to pop up. So this will help you as you get oriented in the Decentraland environment. Uh, you can move around using the arrow keys or uh, uh, WASD. Um, you can click V, which is a helpful one to kind of hop between first person and third person. Um, and you can, of course, change your outfit by clicking I. I won't click change my outfit this time, but because I like I like my Christmas sweater. But here we are. We are in Decentraland, and this is a really cool build by Polygonal Mind and Xcopy. Um, and you can learn more about it through the links here, but this is this is one of those buildings that's kind of like the dystopia, I could say. Uh, Xcopy is known for some kind of just really these beautiful glitch art projects and artworks that are sort of um, sort of uh, uh, not always optimistic, but have this like wonderfully crass commentary about the world of technology and how it sort of dominates us and how we're subservient to it. This project crash site is very literally a crash site. You can see the uh, um, crash site here. And through it, you see all these wonderful glitch artworks that are scattered throughout the environment. And I believe over here, we're gonna run into a, um, a otherworldly character. It's the pilot. Um, so Decentraland allows you to have these really amazing interactive uh, parts of the environment. You can create avatars that have kind of their own storylines. And uh, there's a lot of kind of Easter eggs you can hide in a Decentraland build and a lot of artwork that you can scatter into it. Um, so this is a pretty fun, if you guys can see my screen. You can hop with spacebar, by the way. Um, I think Decentraland works really well for Xcopy's aesthetic as well. There's this glitch aesthetic to his work. And um, in Decentraland, you get kind of a sort of glitchy texture mapping that isn't even, I don't know if it's uh, quite the same quality that you can get in Crypto Voxels or Somnium Space. It's a little bit different. It's a little more pixelated. When you import an object, it's uh, the rendering engine takes it down to, I think, 512 by 512 pixels. So whatever it is, it's it's brought back down to a gaming engine level, which is pretty standard. Um, but it works really well for certain buildings that like, I think this is an incredibly creative environment that is a lot of fun. And there was an opening for this uh, maybe a couple months ago, and I think it pretty much crashed to Central Land. Um, a ton of people showed up and it was a lot of fun. Um, but you can kind of see the boundaries of the building here. You can see the plot outline. So you can see where the parcel begins and ends along this texture here. 
this is the kind of standard texture mapping for a parcel in Decentraland that has kind of a few different natural elements and grass. Um, and you can see here with Polygonal Mine, they created this really fun otherworldly sort of uh, forest with trees and rocks, and boulders and beautiful neon um, and lots of fun links to kind of discover different things about the work itself. Um, but yeah, I thought this was a fun kind of uh, example of maybe this is an anti-build. This is not a architecture building. This is more of an experience in a virtual world that, you know, not everything has to be a building. It could be a landscape. It could be an experience, more of an app or a game. And there are lots of different examples of games um, in Decentraland that we can explore together. But this is a good example of kind of an environment that doesn't really create a build in the traditional sense. This is very much a full experience and a really fun way to create using this uh, virtual environment. There's lots of fun stuff in here, guys. Here's another one. So lots of fun stuff. Uh, you can see some of these look like the rabble on async art here. But um, love X copies work and this is a fun fun place to explore when you've got some time to really dig into the different Easter eggs that are hiding here because I think they're a handful. Um, does anyone have any questions about this build or, or Decentraland? I'll do my best to, to answer but I really only experienced this as much as you have. I was here for the opening and this was something that just really captivated me and um, but uh, definitely I'll send links for uh, Polygonal Mind, their Twitter, so you can follow their buildings that they create as well. <laughs> there, uh, Map Lab is saying there's loud music. There's definitely some, some music you can interact with and it might be a little bit jarring. It's a crash site, so there's gonna be some, some funky stuff. But if you go to the front here, you can follow lots of different links. Um, and yeah, I just, I love these trees. These are super fun. Um, all right. I think we can hop to the next build here. Unless anyone has, uh, does anyone have any questions before we hop to the, this will be the last building here. And since we'll stay in Decentraland, of course, you can continue to ask any questions you have about Decentraland. Yeah, I have a question. The outlines on the trees and shapes, are they textures or shaders? The black uh, outlines. I believe, the, I believe everything is a texture here. Um, I think all of these are custom textures that are then mapped onto GLB files that are uploaded to the build itself. So I believe all of these are, I believe they're, they're custom textures. Um, but, you know, the outlines of these are, you know, it's interesting. I'm not sure how they did these trees. I do see that there's an outline around it. So maybe there's a couple components here. I think there's a repeating texture. And then maybe there's a shader option they've done to provide that black outline that no matter your perspective, you kind of see this. Um, but very interesting. And there's some really cool glow and neon uh, emission shaders that your uh, objects that you can create in Decentraland too. Um, these are fun that just sit here. So can you write shaders in Decentraland and use in your build, builds? I believe I believe you can. Uh, there's a lot of flexibility in Decentraland for customization because they are kind of trying to create a lot of gaming opportunities. Um, if you follow the in the link that I shared last week, there's some good documentation and a good wiki about the different options that you can create in Decentraland. I think there's a lot of flexibility here that you can't really. Um, what's nice with Decentraland is they have a web builder. So you don't need to download an app to be able to build. You just log in with your MetaMask. And from there, you can just sort of test and upload things to a test parcel of land. 
and see what it's capable of um, without publishing it to a land to a land that you own you can just publish it to the builder itself and explore it um, so there's a lot of ways to test things out uh, all of this is pretty much glb files and and gifs and different image media but um, these are all just look like gifs um, but yeah there's a whole lot you can do here i uh, have just started building with decentraland for the first time so i'm still getting used to the different requirements here and trying to figure out what's what but um, it's a very, very cool place to build and, and very flexible in terms of what you can create. Thank you, Kirk. Of course, I hope I help answer that. I, I, technically, I, I'm, you, you might know more than I, honestly. I'm still learning this stuff too. And I, I think um, I can look in the docs as well and see if there's more information about what you can install into these different builds. I, I will check also. Thanks again. Of course, uh, great questions, guys. Um, um, and it looks like Lab Lab has found a dystopia or utopia. When a, a building is loading for the first time, it shows up in that green kind of glow on the perimeter. So if this building looks to you like one giant green glow, then your computer might have not been able to load it. <laughs> but let's hop into the next one here. Yeah, I kind um, of enjoy it that. <laughs> It's very it's pleasing. Yeah. All right. As I load this one, um, this final build here, because I don't want to keep you guys all day, but there's a whole lot you can explore in the metaverse. Um, this is a build by Crypto Argentina. Uh, and this is actually a collaborative effort with um, the Museum of Crypto Art with Shivani and Colborne. And it's a beautiful showcase of, of artwork and a really beautiful exhibition um, building that was created by a couple different builders uh, within the Crypto Arch community. And uh, let's just load it here and hop in again. All right. Again, we might be in different worlds here. We might be in the same one. Let's see. All right, here we are. This is a beautiful building um, that you can explore in the center of. <laughs> Someone's already found uh, some of the elevators, teleportation tubes on the side. There's a little bit of an intro here at the beginning, which can tell you a little bit more about the, the project. Um, and but they have these beautiful different levels that you can explore with lots lots of different uh, niches of artwork that you can go up to. When you click on an artwork, you can learn a lot of information about it and see it on OpenSea. This is similar to the viewer in Somnium Space and in CryptoVoxels as well. Each has kind of a little buy for when you click on a blockchain linked artwork or media. Um, I like this little ramp on the outside here that can take you from level to level. You can hop in and look up. Uh, whoop. I'm going to try to take the elevator all the way up. Let's see what happens. There we go. All right. Easy as that. Uh, lots of different beautiful works here. Highly recommend exploring this build and seeing the different, different levels. Um, let's see if we can go to the roof just for fun. Get a real sense. Going all the way. Um, and that way we can get a view also of the surrounding environment. Whoa. Okay. And of course I fell. Now I'm stuck. Whoops. Sometimes you fall and that's okay. Some of these. Oh, well. Well, here you can see a lot of the surrounding environment which is super fun. Um, and I just think this is a really great, uh, great showcase of both an incredible building and some amazing art. And they did it perfectly to ADA compliant guidelines. I can't jump off. Or maybe I can, I'm getting stuck. Ah, 
Okay, here we go. Um, so yeah, this is a super fun build. Highly recommend people to kind of explore around it. And I love hearing in Decentraland, there's all these different footsteps that you can hear as you walk around a place. And I think this is just a really different flavor to the other metaverses that this one has much more of a gaming aesthetic to me. Um, it's a little bit low, low poly and, um, but a lot more kind of versatile and kind of what you can see in the different buildings that are created because I think Decentraland has a lot more flexibility with what you can upload quickly to prototype different buildings. Um, it's fairly flexible with the different shapes that you can upload. They of course have a polygon count like, like any of the others or like Somnium Space does um, and texture requirements too. But I think there's a lot you can do here. It's still very sort of, uh, you know, low poly, but I think what you can create, you can even see across the street, there's a beautiful sort of medieval construction over there, ancient construction. But, you know, this is a beautiful building and um, there's a tremendous amount you could do with these tools now that you couldn't do a year ago. And I think this is just a wonderful example of a community project itself with uh, uh, CryptoArg and the community they've been able to rally together to showcase art, support their own community and involve builders who, oh, well, I don't even know what I just, I think, uh, <laughs> whoa, do you guys see what's happening on my screen? So you know what that is? That's a fun glitch. Somebody baked in a collider object from an old elevator that used to be exactly where I'm standing now. And that is really cool. It's doing the same thing as the other elevator, but we don't see the geometry surrounding it. And I think that's because there's an old shape here that was left in the build. That's fun. Let's try to see that again. Where was that? Yeah, it's around here. Whoa, that's cool. So there it looks like there are a few different collider objects that are still sitting around different places. Maybe that's an Easter egg there. But now we're on the roof. That was unexpected. <laughs> um, yeah, Nagar, I don't know what's uh, what that was, but that was cool. Um, so now we're on the roof unexpectedly. And yeah, I think that's it for the tour, guys. If you guys have any questions, um, feel free to ask. But you know, this is this is. Uh... <laughs> I think this is a fun finale. If if you guys can make it to the roof through the mysterious tubes that take you up there, that would be fun. Um, it's just fun yeah, to do think... the. Cryptovox has worked on iPad uh, just fine. Uh, I didn't get oh, central, the central and open, but yeah, yeah, it worked. Oh, that's wonderful. Um, Cryptovox was definitely, I feel like, is the most accessible um, I found in the past because it's just very easy to kind of walk around and it was a little bit faster to load in some cases. Um, yeah. What I like about CryptoVoxels too is that it, everyone is in the same world all at once. Oh, sorry, I'm go go ahead, Walt. Yeah, I just wanted that it, it probably has some kind of mode for mobile also. So there was this kind of like D-pad that you could push to move around. Oh, that's great. Um, yeah, I think uh, it's interesting. I haven't explored with um, uh, with the iPad yet for a handful of these, but definitely. Um, I think these tools are getting better all the time. And I think we're starting to see a ton of improvement um, where honestly, a lot of these companies now are finally, uh, they're, they're raising pretty significant amounts of money, either through land sales or through royalties on land sales, but also just through fundraising. So I think in the next couple of years, we're gonna see some dramatic changes with how these worlds interact and the quality uh, that you can create buildings uh, into them. Um, but yeah, I think, you know, what's interesting is we'll also probably start to see better compatibility between NFTs and these virtual worlds. I think we're just still seeing them as, um, honestly kind of like block explorers, um, where you can drop in a, a piece of information and it provides kind of a window to connect out to an NFT. But I think we'll start to see, uh, more environments that are interactive with the NFT that provide real-time 
price information, real-time auctions. Um, I think we saw that with Arium Spaces that they're providing real-time auction information. There are a lot of different worlds that are bringing the quality higher for how we can interact with NFTs virtually. And uh, this is really just the beginning. This is just the start of, um, of things. And I think with these original three here of crypto voxels of Somnium Space and Decentraland, they're also very cooperative with one another. These are separate companies. They're all using the same blockchain, but they've kind of committed to one another that they would be interoperable over time, which is very exciting. Uh, I think they announced that um, a few months ago. Oh, Mablab is saying, yes, those paintings on the walls are NFTs. Um, but what I think will be interesting over time is more interactive. Right now, they're, they really yeah, provide they links. Are. Um, yeah, try to I think click on them, but they do not react, so they are not interactive. Like, for example, uh, Somnium Space was super nice. You can like click on it, and then you have the possibility to go and buy them, watch them close. Yes, I think, um, uh, I guess it depends on how they're uploaded. Sometimes it's just an image texture, and sometimes it is in the wallet of the of the address used to create the build. So a little hack sometimes yeah. if you see a uh, an image texture that doesn't have a link, usually means that it's not actually in the wallet of the person mm. that uploaded it. Mm. Um, does anyone have questions? See if I can get back down here. Use the sky bridge. Hey. I think you have a few questions from Talon in the chat. Oh, perfect. Um, seriously considering investing. So this is Callan. Uh, I'm seriously considering investing in a plot in one of the metaverses. Do you think there will be one metaverse in particular that will come out on top? And uh, which of the three that you visited today is the easiest to build on? Ooh, that's that's a big question. Um, let me think about that. I think right now my hope, honestly, is that um, that these metaverses will be more compatible with one another, so that when one gets better, they all get better. That's my hope. Um, I personally, I can't give investment advice, but I can say that in terms of building on on these worlds, I've had a very easy time with, um, an easy time, but it, it's been very accessible to build with Somnium Space. It's been very accessible to build with Crypto Voxels and honestly with Decentraland. So all three have been like in their own way, pretty accessible to build with. I think Decentraland is probably the most sort of like uh, broadly accepted uh, uh, place to build, but I think Crypto Voxels is certainly one of the the most OG sort of environment to build with, and maybe the easiest in terms of logging in and quickly prototyping something. Um, and for Somnium Space, I think it's the one with the strongest VR component. So honestly, that's a very non-answer for you, <laughs> but they each have their own flavor. And I think it depends on ultimately what technology you want to learn more about or want to support in the long term if you're looking at an investment. I think for VR, you'll see that Somnium Space is really a pioneer. Um, I think for uh, Decentraland, um, they're really into gaming and getting gaming involved. Same thing with Sandbox, honestly, Sandbox and Decentraland. And CryptoVoxels, I think, has this incredible community around it that's very underground. Um, CryptoVoxels, to me, a lot of these spaces are honestly like, like I don't know, like Berlin in the, in the 90s. Uh, I lived in Berlin for a little bit, so I always make Berlin art comparisons to the crypto art world. But um, Crypto Voxels has that kind of Berlin aesthetic of, you know, a little bit rough, a little bit, uh, you, you know, ear to ear, like you got to hear from folks to find the right spaces to go. Um, and I don't know, I think it's a different dynamic depending on where you're ultimately looking to create. 
It was a very long non-answer for you. <laughs> no financial advice, I'm sorry. Um, are there any other questions? So in, in Insomnium and crypto auctions, you have to buy the land first before you can build any, anything there, right? So in um, you can technically build in all three without owning land. The trick is um, you can't publish something um, to the world itself unless you own land. So land is the thing that, you know, if we're sitting on right now in, in the crypto, crypto arg, uh, museum. Um, you can build that and you can prototype this entire building in the Decentraland Builder. And you can even share it with people, but you can't have it exist in the world. And I think that's the gatekeeping thing with, where you need to own a land NFT in order for it to be published uh, publicly like that. Um, but what's nice about, honestly, with all three worlds, they have builder apps that you can download and it's totally free or you can even do it in browser. And you can prototype different things and learn how to create uh, without having to own land. Um, Crypto Voxels has a great one where it even gives you a, a URL that you can share with other people. Um, you can't all be there at the same time, but you can share a link. And Decentraland as well. You can use the builder.decentraland um, uh, website, and it basically allows you to prototype anything you want and then walk around it. Um, so there's, I think it's becoming a lot more accessible now and, uh, a little bit easier to build without having to own land. Land is certainly expensive. I think in all of these worlds, uh, you know, maybe the minimum might be an ETH for a parcel somewhere, maybe in sandbox, it's a little bit cheaper. Um, there are parts of Decentraland that are a little bit cheaper. Somnium space is pretty expensive right now. And, uh, crypto voxels, I think it depends on the size of the plot. Um, but what I can do after this is definitely share um, a handful of other buildings. And I would encourage everyone else to hop back in when you have a chance to. And, um, whoa, where am I? I love, I love misusing buildings, just kind of finding, you know, places to run around. Um, I would encourage everyone to explore and explore neighboring buildings as well. There's some fun ones in this area certainly and take some screenshots and share them in the chat with everyone um i see already hey nedzo got to the top here um and yeah there's some really cool places to experience this is a very raw environment there are lots of things to explore and i'd encourage folks to use those series of links that i shared last week to figure out building for the first time um, i can do it with you i'll maybe log into the crypto voxels builder and start uh, assembling some things and share screenshots of my process, if that would be helpful for folks. I just uh, wanted to say, I got to oh, jump sorry, right. to the next meeting, but thank you so much for the tour. Uh, I really appreciate it. So catch you guys next time. Absolutely. Th Ryan, thanks so much. And thanks for the amazing questions as well. Thank you. Ciao, ciao. Bye, Ryan. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. All right, folks. Uh, Nicole, um, if there's anything for... else. Yeah. That was amazing. Thank you so much. I hope that was fun. It was so fun for me. So, yeah. Awesome. I had a blast. I hope people enjoyed it. And if you have any questions at all, uh, any question, please feel free to message me in, in the Architecture channel. And later this week, I'll post a few building tutorials and show some screenshots about what that process looks like, depending on the app that we use. Thanks a lot, Kirk. Appreciate it. Awesome. All right. Take care, guys, and enjoy. Explore around.